Welcome, everybody. So our presenter for this session, uh, her name is Dita Marcher. She's a body dynamic, a body dynamic analyst, therapist, teacher, and human rights activist. She has developed the Body Dynamic Veteran Shock and Trauma Program. She's also the chairwoman of Body Dynamic Somatic Psychology. The website is, that she has is bodynamic.com. And you can find out more information uh, by checking out that website after this presentation. So please enjoy this pre-recorded presentation by Dita Marcher, Great Together Trauma Healing for Social Change. Welcome to yet another session at the Embodiment Conference. My name is Julie S. and I'm the Channel Manager for Trauma and Social Change. Today, I would like to present to you Ditta Marcha, who is a body dynamic analyst, therapist, and teacher. She's a human rights activist, developer of the Body Dynamic Veteran Shock and Trauma Program, and chairwoman of the Body Dynamic Somatic Psychology. Welcome, Ditta. It's really great to have you. Thank you very much. So when I was seeing this theme, trauma and society, I was thinking, okay, I have something to say here. I have something to bring in here uh, because we, and I use the word we, created an amazing program and amazing places, veteran hubs in Ukraine after the war broke out, broke out in Ukraine in 2014 after Maidan. Uh, I was sitting with uh, some friends, some Ukrainian friends, because I was there because of other teaching. And one of these very good friends, he was on the way to fight on the, uh, the Eastern Ukraine. And I was going like, oh no, I need to find a reason. I need to find something that is more important and gives him more meaning uh, to stay and not just running up in normally rubber boots or a weapon from the Second World War and be cannon feet because so many people died and so many more got traumatized. So I gave him this idea. I told him, listen, your country has nothing. It has nothing to meet back to meet all these traumatized young people who will come back. You don't have any veteran center. You don't have any trainings. You have nothing. I have an idea that we could create something that many people in your country will benefit. So Atom, this is to you. Thank you. Thank you for saying yes to the idea. And then later, a lot of other people came uh, and joined and had similar ideas. Oleg, I'd like to thank you too. Uh, Ivana, you have done a tremendous work to create and work the veteran hub. And now in Ukraine, there is existing three veterans hub and a mobile place, a mobile uh, place who can drive around and get in contact with traumatized veterans and their family. When we started creating this program, I already had done it for veterans in Denmark. And you might think, Denmark, what? How can there be any traumatized soldiers? But to maybe you surprise, I like to tell you that in fact, the last 30 years, Denmark have sent soldiers to all hotspots. And in the last 20 years, we are the country who have sent more soldiers into war per citizen than any other country in the world. Surprise, huh? So we have a lot of traumatized veterans but what we also have is a very old functional democracy that they did not have in Ukraine. So what we were thinking about was not only curing PTSD, but we were thinking about 
what could we create that will make post-traumatic growth? So you can use your trauma, you can use your PTSD to become even a greater person. And that was the whole idea. And it lies just in front of you. It lies right here. What are we doing when we train military people or fire uh, department or police people or even doctors in an emergency? We train them in automatic skills that can override the instinct. And we keep on training that. That's one of the reasons that when there is a great fire, uh, a fireman doesn't do the natural thing, run away from the fire. He runs into the fire because he's been trained so much that even if he goes into a shock, his automatic skills will kick in for him before his instinct. So my idea was to build up automatic skills for veterans that will make them overcome their PTSD in a way that they will even expand in their capacity. So I was not so much thinking about how we can heal post-traumatic stress, but how we can grow from it. And one of the important things to grow is to understand. The ego needs, my consciousness needs to understand. So teaching veterans or teaching soldiers that they do have a normal reaction to an unnormal situation is very important. Making them understand what flashback is, what it is in the brain, what happened to them is very important. So basic knowledge about shock, basic knowledge about crisis after shock, and basic knowledge about what can create post-traumatic stress. That was very important. Another thing that was very important is to take the body in. The body ego is the closest place to our instinct in the brain. They're the closest connection and they are very important of building resources and building new automatic skills that you will have in the back of your mind. In body dynamic, we have done a lot of work for over 40 years with empiric research of which muscles that is attached to different functions. So we know very much about the muscle that is attached to your boundaries, the muscle that is attached to your centering, the muscle that is attached to your interpersonal skills, the muscle that is attached to your ability to manage energy. And with energy, I also mean emotional energy. Because if you are in a PTSD and you are in a free state, to come back into the consciousness, the ego, you have to go through the body, you have to go through the limbic system, you have to go and land through an emotion. And that means you have to go from terror to fear, from rage to anger, you have to land into a constructive way of shame so it doesn't be, becomes a destructive way of shame and it just blows you out again into shamelessness. We have to go from grief to sadness and I could go on. These emotions are contained through our body. So certain muscles contain we contain with uh, they we contain the emotion with and here i would like to say as fritz pearls one time said the difference between excitement and fear lies in your ability to breathe 
So all your breathing muscles, they are helping you being able to contain emotions. And there is a lot of breathing muscles. So we can breathe in. Breathing is not just one thing. Breathing has a ton of variation. And we have a lot of muscles that even are supporting our breathing. Grounding is not just stepping and stepping on your feet. It's really the ability to grab into this reality. Being able to keep your boundaries is very important. And in shock, boundaries has been destroyed. Centering has been lost. Energy management was not available. So there is certain things that we can say for sure the body couldn't handle. So we couldn't stay in our consciousness and we went into shock. Another thing that was very important for me that I said to the group is, okay, if we gonna create something and this working with growth here, we also should have a focus of working with something. So these young and young men and women have a chance to go out and literally change their society in other ways than using the gun. So we put in another way of being able to talk. In body dynamic, we call it the body knot a way of communicating when the energy goes up so you still can stay in contact and don't have to go into violent. And we train that a lot. Another thing that is very important for a lot of traumatized people, it's how do I make meaning out of something that experience being meaningless afterwards? Like I lost a lake, I have to fight with the, the country, I have to be recognized as a veteran, I have to go into court, because you have to remember most of the soldiers who went up in the beginning were not even soldiers. Ukraine did not really have a strong army. It was young people that were starting on Maidan who were fighting for their country's democracy. They wanted something better for themselves, for their children, for their grandchildren. So if that should be possible, we need to give them skills that they literally could go out in society and try to implement those changes in a new way. That means communication skills, understanding about what make groups function, being able to see where the problem comes from so you can direct the issue in the right layer of problems. But that also means being able to contain yourself. And that also means being able to learn what patient means. Because you do not change a society on one year, two year, three years you might not even live to see it. You might just be the person who moves the stones so other can plow the field. But someone has to start somewhere. And that's something I learned for my human right work. It's my passion. I'm gonna push a dog here. It's my passion uh, for human rights that really taught me that I need to have patience. I might not see the result of the work we do today. It might come for the next generation. So they had to learn that change is not coming as fast as they really want. So with all these skills <clears throat> and all these ideas, sorry, uh, I shared them with some of the younger Ukrainians. They liked their ideas, they had ideas, 
and we gather together a group, a group that have grown now, a group who can stand on their own feet. Because the point is when you go into a country and you want to support them with whatever, you only support them, you don't start to control them. And that means as soon as you have helped them to stand on their own feet, you back off. I'm a Dane, I'm not a Ukrainian, even I love Ukraine. So I need, I need to learn how to support them. I need to learn how to make them strong in their, their ability so they could start train others. And my idea of post-traumatic growth was we take some traumatized soldiers, we work with them and we land them in a other place where they have grown so they can go and do training for other traumatized soldiers. Of course, we had a backup group of body dynamic therapists in Ukraine. We had backup group of psychiatrists and psychologists. And this backup group is still existing for the people who are now running and Popratima and the veteran hub. So the first training uh, was pretty poorly, you know, we, we gathered a group, we found a place, it was winter, there was no heat, there was very little heat for me, no heat, uh, it was really cold, but it was an amazing group of people and they were really in there to learn. Okay, I came as a foreigner, I came as a woman, uh, uh, so there was a little skeptical the first couple of days. One thing that was good for me was I could lean into my experience I had from ex-Yugoslavia, the experience I had from Lebanon, the experience I had from Africa. So the work I have done in Hotspot Zone, I could lean into that and I could bring example that made them think, ah, oh, okay, she knows what she's talking about. She's not only talking from a book, she's talking for emotional experience. She's talking for her own trauma. And yes, indeed, I was. So I put myself on the line. Some of the people I met there was very traumatized. There was one guy who said to me, I don't think I'm ever going to have a normal life. I'm too broken. I'm proud to say today he has three kids. He has a wife. And right now he's working in politics to get in to the local, uh, what you call it, the council, uh, because he want to do change but he wants to do change in the democratic way. Even it's difficult, but he's fighting and he keeps on fighting a war. He just changed his gun with his mouth, his idea and his passion. And that was my idea. That was my passion. How can we teach someone who has post-traumatic stress to land in a growing capacity within themselves and using this to change their own society with their own passion without a gun. That's my deepest wish. And now I'm only using this guy as an example. I could give a lot of other examples. One of the things we did afterwards, we picked some of the people and we offered them a possibility to do a whole practitioner training. So they did a shock training, they did a practitioner training. So they were able to go back home and 
teach some of their people how to work with these tools. Now there is a program that is running for the wives. There is a program that is running for the veterans. And they also created, I heard, summer camps, an area for the whole family also taking the children in. And the newest thing now is that they are starting to gather together to teach social workers some of the basic skills so they are able to work with traumatized soldiers. They have got a lot of financial support. They have got a lot of millions to open their places and running their places. I have to make a specific thank you to the Canadian embassy and the Canadian country because they were really in there and they were really supportive in the whole process. Now the Americans have come in with their support. I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, other private organizations uh, have been there. I probably don't even know or remember all of them. And now I have a lot of dogs and some of them are barking right now. That's probably what you hear in the background. <coughs> yeah. So if this is not trauma work that can manifest into social change, I don't know what is. And it has all been done with the focus of not looking at PTSD, but looking at post-traumatic growth. So not really looking at calming the system, no, looking at reorienting the whole system so it's able to handle and be in the world also with that reality of have been wounded or seeing dead people. So it had really, really changed um, a lot for a lot of people. Now, when I have said that, I like to go back and talk a little about the body, because one of the things we have focused a lot about in this training is training the body ego, training contact, even the physical contact, uh, and training new skills through the body ego. And for a lot of these veterans, that was really awkward. That was really weird. Uh, and in the beginning, it was like, what are you doing? But it also created this mystical thing because when they did the exercises together or alone, they were able to see and sense that it really made a difference. So the body was really important. Another thing that was really important was the ability uh, to make them all understand how important it is to have a safe place, a safe room, a safe house, a safe place in the mountain, and how important it was to have safe people, literally safe people, not imaginary, not dead, but someone who existed now and here, literally having a network of safety. I like to give an example here too. So one of the veterans uh, who were through the program got into a kind of conflict uh, with someone in Western Ukraine and was badly stabbed in a fight. So since he was one of the heroes, uh, the news sh showed that on the camera in the news. Uh, and all the veterans are getting this kind of bracelet when they finished the training. It's green with one pearl in. And they had take everything off him because he was unoperated. Uh, he was not conscious. But one other veteran was seeing, oh, it's one of ours. And within two hours, they were on their way 
up to Western Ukraine, a group of people, they had gathered money and support for him and they were there for him. This is so important. The connection, the networking, the safe people is so important. And this is not only important for veterans, this is important for all of us. We all need safety. We all need safe people because nobody knows maybe shit hits the fan tomorrow and then it's your turn. Oh, maybe I'm going to get a beep here. Uh, sorry, I'm European. Uh, so we all need this. What we also all need, we all need to be able to use our body and it needs to kick in as an automatic skill when the energy level goes up. So now I'm gonna move a little because I like to show you some exercises. So I'm coming in here and as you can see, I'm having some dogs here. In fact, I have take, I'm in Greece this, uh, and I have take uh, 19 street dogs into the house. Uh, they are part of taking care of me. I'm living a little isolated, but they are also um, here because they are supporting when I have gone out and I come back from a hotspot, they are the first one I connect to doing my body exercising, landing slowly to back into civilization. So I like to talk a little about boundaries. Boundaries are not only boundaries. There is so many different boundaries we have. We have our skin boundaries. We have our personally space boundaries. We have our territory boundaries. We have social boundaries. And we have boundaries around how to make space for ourselves in social contact. And different muscle supporting these different boundaries. So physical boundaries, that is our first boundary, is our skin. And the skin is not really a muscle. It's the biggest organ in the body. And, but it's a very important boundary so what we did every morning and every evening with the veterans, we let them clap each other, waking up the skin boundaries, creating a life in the space. Some, it was too much to be touched by others. So we asked them to do it on themselves, but in eye contact with someone else. Then we had, uh, then we introduce them to their personal space. And in their personal space, we, are, we were created uh, using the muscle from personal space. That is, this is my space. In this way, you're taking your own social space and you're taking it from the delta. So you move your arm up, you use the front of your delta, you move the arm on the side, you use the side of the delta, you move your arm back, then you use the back of your deltas. So I'm gonna do it again. This, and then all the way down is my space. You should try it and you should try it by saying the words, this is my space. Another way of say having a boundary is use your anchor. I believe that if you cannot use your anchor, anchor is made for boundaries. It's made to say, stop, stop. And in anger, moving forward, and you mean you stop, not rage, but anger. If you cannot say stop, 
and you keep on letting things getting too close, then you fall into rage or you fall into being very judgmental or you fall into revenge. So it's very, very important to be able to say you stop and do it with some anger. No? That we have emo every emotion has a body movement. That's why we have emotions. It's a way of talking to each other before language. And the body movement for anger is stop. And when you teach people and you keep on doing it and you keep on doing it until it becomes an automatic skills of saying stop instead of collapsing, then you have created a new way of being in the world. You have created a new way of being you in the world. And honestly, your personality starts to change and expand because you position yourself completely different around people. So you don't need to wait for other people to respect you stop. You are able to make it in relationship with other people, okay? So this was a little about boundaries. Now I like to go a little about talk, sorry. Now I like to talk a little about energy management. Uh, energy management is I need to be able to breathe. And there is so many ways I can breathe. I can breathe upwards. What I, people often do when they get scared, they go, and then they freeze here. But I can also have a soft breathing upwards. I can breathe in the front of my chest. I can breathe in the back of my in my back. I can breathe on the sides, making this area bigger, and I can do it from up here. I can do it from here. I can do it from here. So the rib case moves outwards. I can also start really notice breathing from my di diaphragm. And that means the first impulse should come from the diaphragm. Of course, when I breathe here, the diaphragm moves with the intercostal, the muscle in your ribs, between your ribs, sorry. Uh, uh, but can I breathe with the first impulse from the diaphragm? So it's really the diaphragm that moves first and takes the ribs. And one good way of doing that is you can hold on your mouth and breathe slowly through your nose, or you can hold your nose, close your mouth, and only breathe from the side. If this is too difficult, you can take two straws and you can cut them like this, put them on each side, and then you can hold your nose and then you can breathe through the straw. That's a very powerful exercise to practice uh, activating the diaphragm and a very good one, I can recommend it. You can also learn how to really use the muscles in your back, particularly uh, trapezius and your rhombites to move your shoulder blades away from each other. I'm going to stand like this. And inhale here and exhale here. Or you can do the other way. Use the muscle in the front. Then you pull the shoulder blades together. And different ways of learning to breathe. Some muscles are directly breathing muscles. Other muscles are supporting the breathing muscles. The more we can breathe when emotion 
rise in us, the more we can have the flow or allowing the free movement of the emotion, the more we can stay <clears throat> in an automatic skill that do not put us in to instinct. One of the important muscles, not one muscle, one of the important thing uh, we have to be able to do also to manage uh, uh, our energy uh, is that we have to be able to adapt to different situation. Right now I'm standing here talking to all of you. Now I'm looking up, I can see uh, uh, on Zoom because we have to adapt to Corona. I cannot just travel to a conference. Things have been complicated, but the ability for adapting without losing yourself comes from your ability to orient and reorient and your ability not to lose your center. So there is two things that needs to work together. My ability to stay in my center and move from there into all the situation that goes on in the world. And I need to be able to have flexible neck muscles so I can orient and I can reorient. And one of the places that freeze when we go into a shock state is the neck muscle. We go like this, or we freeze where danger is and we forget to come back. Uh, so we are frozen in a specific position. So we're losing the ability to bodily reorienting and find a new way or a new door or a new solution to a problem. So being able <clears throat> to have life in your orientation muscle is really important. One little exercise you can do is that you can just do a little like it wouldn't be nice to say it, but a little like you have Parkinson, Parkinson in your neck, but small movements, very small movements. And you can do that standing or you can do that sitting and then just be aware of your breathing. Imagine that you are breathing down to your center and exhaling out in your center, not out from your center, but out in your center. So you connect the orientation to the place around your centering. Very simple little exercise. And we will practice this with the veterans again and again and again. And now this uh, situation in Ukraine was some of the people came on the training and then uh, they went back to the war. And I had, uh, on one of the training, I had a sniper and he was really practiced these exercises. And he ended up coming back to me and say, you know what, Dede, before I'm, when I'm laying up there and have to shoot, I'm doing this exercise and I notice I'm more clear and more precise. <laughs> then I got a little shock because that was not my intention to make him a better gunman or a better sniper, but in some way it shows how powerful these exercises really are. They are very powerful, simple, but very powerful. There is also one thing that is important, that is very, very important, it's that you do not lose your pelvis floor when the energy goes up, because if you lose your pelvis floor, in fact, your center falls out of you. So we were teaching again and again, and when I'm saying again and again, hours, every training, in the morning, after lunch, in the evening, 
body exercise, body exercise in contact and making them scan themselves. And that means notice how you're sensing now. Do an exercise and then notice again, how are you doing now? Is there any different? What is really important is your ability to sense yourself, put some body sensation, do an exercise, then sense yourself again and notice if there is any different. This is also a very strong way of training the observant ego into the body ego. And when these two connect, you also grow. You, you become aware of yourself in the world, in connection with others, in a whole new way. And it creates a new context for you to be in. And that is also post-traumatic growth and or trauma growth. So pelvis flow, very simple, little funny exercises uh, that we could laugh a lot about, uh, particularly with strong military people. So you stand, you put your butt out, you imagine you have a bowl of soup and you have to drink the soup with your butt. So you go in and then you go, and then you have to hold it. And then you relax, but not collapsing. That means you let go, but you keep just 10% of the tension. And then we all started to laugh, of course, and they were laughing and they were like saying to each other, if you tell anyone I did this exercise, but we have good laugh and laughing is important. Uh, <clears throat> one thing I learned for a guy called William Schulz that in fact took the quote uh, for Moliere is something in life is too serious to be taken serious. So we need to bring laughter and humor in because it makes us relax. It releases a lot of good in our drugs, uh, chemical, chemicals, and it makes us want to connect. So now I gave you a little about boundaries, gave you a little about centering, something about orientation. There's something about being able to contain more emotions, because if I come with high frequencies from my crocodile brain instinct into the emotion and I cannot contain the emotion, I will just jump out again. So we need to be able to create a better container. I am my container. I am my body. I'm not just these 2% up here. I am all of me. And the more I can use and be with all of me, the more I can stay into this reality. Now I will take the shoes off uh, to show you two other small exercises. Now we're having a barking party again. I'm sorry for that. Uh, so one of the exercises is to be a little flexible. So, you know, like just standing and allowing a muscle called popliteus to lock, unlock, lock, unlock, lock, unlock. And remember, breathing is always a good thing. Breathe into it. Mm -hmm. So, and when you sense that there is more life around your knees area, that you are not too stiff or too collapsed, but then you have more flexibility, then start grabbing the ground with your feet. So you start grabbing the ground with the feet. And when you have done that, again, remember to breathe. Breathing is a good thing. 
then you put your hands on your head and then you push a little on the head because a very important grounding area is your head. And then you might ask me why? And then I will say gravity, you are grounded. Gravity hits your body on the ground constantly, like a magnet, boom, boom, like this. Then, so there is no question that your body is not on the ground. So what is grounding? For me, grounding is how much of you can you be in you and how much of you is dissociated from your body, from you. And then it makes very much sense grabbing the reality with the toes and holding the lead on your head and breathe and sense how much of my sensation of my energy can be in me right now without overstretching your knees because then you block for the energy to go upwards. So in a movement like this, and then you notice now I'm starting to move a little back and forward because there is two muscles that is really supporting you of being the standing human being you are. And if they didn't work all the time, you will fall on your face. That's how much gravity there is. It's constantly pushing us. And that means you, there is a muscle behind called soleus. I love this muscle. A lot of doctors call it the second heart. It's the muscle who helps you with this movement. Here you stretch it, here you contract it. And then there is a muscle in front that is called tibialis, tibialis. And these two are constantly working together to keep you upright as a standing human being. And the more you can stand, grab it with your toes, breathe, staying within yourself, in your energy, and being able to manage when energy rise without falling or dissociating, the more you can stay with the emotions that rise in contact and it gives you another chance to do other things than maybe attack or freeze. Being more in you and you building new automatic skills and you building the automatic skills through your body. And we can all learn to make the automatic skills stronger than the instinct. Well, it happens every day for fire people, for bodyguards, for emergency helpers, police people, automatic skills are stronger than the instinct. When it doesn't work and the instinct kicks in, then very often these people get into trouble. So we can learn that too. Everyone can learn that. And for military people, it was a natural thing to train automatic skills because they already trained them to go into battle. Now they trained them for another battle, coming back home to civilization and for the wanting to change their own country to something better. So they needed to be able to be within themselves, knowing to do something else. And all this happens every day around Ukraine. There is people working with traumatized soldiers. There is a possibility that they never had before 
they have veteran help, they have the ability for support, for getting help for their PTSD. And it all started with a little idea and a lot of passionate people who wanted to do something for their country, me who wanted to do something in relation to a friend that grew to become a lot of friends. Now I'm gonna go and sit again. I'm sorry for the noise with the dogs. Uh, that's what happened when we are on live in a house uh, with too many dogs, but they are my beloved dogs. Um, I hope this have given you a little insight. I could have talked, I could have talked a lot longer. I could have showed you a lot more exercises. So maybe another time. Thank you so much, Ditte. Um, it's really inspiring the work that you do. I appreciated the way you mentioned, you know, feeling your boundaries and using breathing in bringing bringing life into your muscles and also bringing in some humor, you know, to create connection as a as a new form of being that perhaps aids healing of PTSD and other other states like that. So thank you very much and. Um, we always ask all of our presenters to share one top embodiment tip at the end. So um, I know you weren't briefed for this, but if you were to, to give us one thing um, to help us become more embodied, what would it be? To become more embodied or uh, to land trauma? Oh, uh, well, you tell me your pick. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna move again. Uh, uh, so if I should give one exercise where you efficiently, very fast, uh, can land if you start getting overwhelmed, it's the cross movement, and it looks like this: you take one one hand and you put here, and you put here, and you put here, and you do it even with sound. So you ensure yourself that you remember to breathe because we can all forget to breathe when we get scared. So you do this for two minutes and you just stand. You land any kind of high energy because you force left and right brain to rework together. If you get anxiety, you do this, you lose your breath for a moment, uh, and then you get focused uh, on breathing and being there, and you forget to be afraid. The system needs to reorient. So this was for trauma. I can pick uh, one exercise to be more embodied. So I need a thing. Two things. Two things I think is very important that we all recognize that doesn't matter where you're born, what color you have, what race you have, we all grasp the world before we understand it. So if there is so many muscles in your fingers and your arms and your toes, I'm gonna step one back. So if you have a hard time and you really want to get into your body, then just take something, stones, whatever, grasp it, and then use your toes up and down to integrate the grasp and do it with the breathing. This is a way of getting more embodied or getting back to the days where you only were body. Thank you so much, Ditta. Um, this was Ditta Marcha from Bodynamics. 
And uh, you are very welcome to join us for uh, future sessions at the Embodiment Conference. Thank you so much for watching this, for being with us here today. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Uh, I definitely enjoyed uh, seeing Dita's uh, dogs as uh, part of the presentation and uh, appreciate the, um, all these exercises and skills that uh, help individuals who suffer from PTSD override those instincts to help get them reoriented to be in the world. So thank you so much, Adida, for sharing these things uh, with us. If you would like to chat further uh, about this presentation and this topic, you can go to the Embodiment Conference portal, Coffee Break Rooms, or you can go to the Facebook groups as well. And there's also uh, Dita's website, which I will ch uh, put into the chat box right here. That would be bodydynamic.com if you'd like to learn more about Dita's work. And if you would like to watch this presentation again or uh, any of the other uh, many presentations uh, that we have here, you can choose to purchase the conference library at 50% off the regular price for the duration of the conference. The library has summaries, cheat sheets, as well as audio only um, versions if you'd like to listen to podcasts. And one of the advantages of that is that you can take your time to watch the presentations and digest them at your own pace, as well as repeat uh, any of the ones that you would like to see again. The purchases of the library allows the conference to be accessible to everybody, uh, particularly those who uh, can't afford to purchase. And so if you are interested and you would like to do so, uh, definitely um, uh, see if that is an option you'd like to pursue. So once again, thank you so much for attending the session today. And uh, Dita already offered her uh, top tip, that wonderful exercise, and hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Mm -hmm.